<laughs> All right. Well, we're four minutes uh, behind schedule, so let's get into it. Do it. So, all right. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. This coming at you live for the Razor Company for another great artisan spotlight. And tonight we're going to be featuring this awesome gentleman, uh, Ryan Tans, the Tansy. And we're really excited. And I'm joined by Gardner, a.k.a. Brushworks, as well as the Don himself, J-Mac, Red Island Shaver from the Canadian Mafia. And it's going to be a good time. And, of course, there's going to be some giveaways. So please stick around for some possible giveaways later on in the show. So there's some stuff going to be happening. Who's doing but, the yeah. counting? That's what I want to know. Uh, Angelo. <laughs> we, 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 we pick the numbers and he does the work. That's right. <laughs> as long as I don't have to no. count. Oh, no, no, no. We got you. Don't worry about it. You just sit back and be awesome. So. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So what we're going to do is, of course, get on into it and, um, you know, see what it is we got going on. But for sure, Ryan, by all means, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the company. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, my name is Ryan Tanzi. I am the um, sole owner and operator of uh, Turnings by Tanzi. Um, started out as a, a one hobby that kind of turned into another and turned into another and turned into another until I um, was introduced to the wet shaving industry and um, just kind of took off from there. And all the other uh, projects and side hobbies kind of all got funneled into uh, brush making, it, which worked out because I was trying to spend as much time as I could with my newfound addiction to wet shaving. So um, it, it just kind of went hand in hand. So uh, I, I'm in North Georgia and um, I've, I've I don't know how long I've been making brushes now, maybe a couple of years. Um, but previously it was uh, turning other random things on the lathes and making material. So, and this is not my primary job, by the way. Uh, mm. I get asked that quite often. One of our questions, thank you. <laughs> there you go. He's paying attention. <laughs> very, very awesome. Yeah, so we're going to do usually how we do it, Ryan. We just kind of do a little roundabout as far as with the questions here. So first off, of course, uh, J-Mac, go ahead, brother. What do you got? All right, well, I'm going to try and keep my questions brief tonight because obviously we have the amazing gardener, uh, an amazing brush maker in his own right. So I'm going to try and leave the, the technical questions to Gardner because he is the in industry expert. So I'm just going to try and provide some color and some, um, some other random questions. So... How long have you been wet shaving, and what is your go-to razor? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> um, okay, so, like, real wet shaving, um, I started, like, right when COVID started. Okay. Before that, I was, like, a, a cartridge user. I was into frags and stuff, but... Um, I was using like, um, I was already kind of semi exploring I, mean, I wasn't like Barbasol in a can, but I was using like, uh, you know, different products from online vendors, you know, testing stuff out because I noticed like skin irritation, like rosacea, acne and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so I was kind of already on that path. I just hadn't had anyone introduce me to this world. Um, go to razor, man, that's tough. Um, it was a <laughs> yeah, light question. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, um, most know I'm a, a huge carbon fan at heart. Nice. Um, but I won't lie. Um, since I've been introduced to, um, the Christopher ba Bradley and the Overlander, I, I frequently find myself reaching for both of those. I mean, that pleases the Canadian Mafia, so. <laughs> I, I won't. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, I still love my carbons. I, I use them all the time, but 
Yep. Overlander and Christopher Bradley both hit the rotation yeah, every single you're, week. You're, you're preaching to the choir, huh? Right. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, I go darn Lander. Friend. Darn right. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Go ahead, Gardner. What do you got, brother? Go ahead. Shoot. All right, so we'll get straight to the technical details here. So what's your favorite and least favorite part of making a brush, and why is least favorite sanding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, favorite – you, you know, I kind of teeter. Sometimes I, I – I really enjoy, you know, I see this shape in my mind and then I, I, you know, turn it, I cut it into that shape on the handle and that rewarding feeling. That, I, I, of course, I can call the rewarding feeling the favorite part. But sometimes teetering the other way, sometimes it's nice to just get on there and just not even think about it. And then you just look down and you're like, oh, I like that. And, or you, you, you know, you, you put your hand around it and you're thinking, oh, uh, did I just come across something? I might have to keep this. <laughs> um, it, you know, that, that's probably my favorite. Uh, it's just the rewarding feeling of, of, of shapes, whether you're accomplishing the one that you're looking for or stumbling across one that maybe you do. Least favorite. Um, Sanding sucks. Um, sometimes just the different densities of materials, it, it, it really sucks. Um, I noticed you're um, somewhat newer with the, the hybrid uh, turning. Um, you have probably noticed that, you know, you're, you're going smooth as butter across the resin and then you hit some of that stabilized wood and you're like oh shit this is get a little bit of chatter because it's so much more dense than the resin um and then all of a sudden you're like oh well, let me stop i had to go sharpen my skew again um that sucks too i won't lie sorry for the long-winded answer <laughs> oh, that's good no you're good, good. that's the way we like it you're speaking my language don't apologize yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. So, um, Ryan, where do you find your inspirations? Oh, um, it changes. Um, oftentimes, um, this is going to sound like like a freaking Hallmark movie or something, but like, you know, you're like sitting in bed and you think like it's like a cool shape or a color combo. People are like, oh, you should write it down. And nobody ever writes it down. You're like, oh, I'll remember it tomorrow. Um, so I think of all sorts, think of all kinds of uh, cool stuff in the evening time when I'm kind of winding down for the day. But sometimes it's just random stuff in the middle of the day. Like, oh, I, I wonder if I go try this, if this is going to work. Um, I do draw inspiration from customers who challenge me. Um, most that have worked with me on a customer quest know that I'm open to whatever sort of challenge you have. Um, because I just feel it makes me um, not only learn, but stay sharp with some of the things that I've already learned. But for the last year, I've taken a lot of inspiration from my from my son, and uh, when he comes and visits here in Georgia, he always asks, "Can I can I go out and pour some blanks?" And um, I tell him, "Yeah, man, go go for it. You know, you don't have to ask. Just just go go do you." And he's doing some shit. And I go and ask him, like, well, wait a second. Like, how did you get the resin to do this? Can you show me that? So I've been actually learning quite a bit from him. Nice. Go figure. Like that's it. awesome. So it, it's you, also getting inspiration from family, from yourself. That's awesome. That's awesome. I yeah. like it. Um, go ahead, J-Mac. What do you got, Brent? Um, so speaking on the blanks, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and, and I think – 
my memory is correct, but you, you started off by doing blanks, but you weren't turning, I believe, at the time. I think was that was that how it went, or and if so, uh, what what inspired you to start uh, turning your own handles? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, some may have heard this story before, but it it all started with wanting to do something with my oldest son. And we, we, we said, hey, let's let's go turn some pens. And we started making, you know, pens on this little Chinese wind lathe that I got on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. And um, um, I'd always been very intrigued by um, exotic, like stabilized wood burls. Um, and then I, you know, started paying attention to like people pouring resin and stuff like that. And one day I told my son, I said, Hey, you know what? I got the best idea ever. We're going to jump up and we're going to make our own material for our pen. And, you know, we'll pour the resin and then we'll take the wood and I'm going to learn how to like die and stabilize and do this and that. And then we can control the whole project from the beginning to the end. It was a freaking horrible idea. So you spend all this time like sourcing wood and then drying it and then you got to stabilize it and you got to pay for the dye and you need certain equipment and you got to cure it and this and that. And then you, then you haven't even made the pen yet. And then you make the pen and do this and it's like, oh man, look at this. I made this pen top to bottom. Look how badass I am. Great. How much is it? Well, I've got 20 hours into it, but you can have it for $30. <laughs> and it's like, no, that's, it, it was a horrible idea. Um, so then I'm just, we, we would make little turned projects for friends, uh, family members for Christmas, you know, coworkers, hey, can you make me a pen that has the Punisher on it or this? And um, then came material specifically, you know, had a couple of people that would say, hey, um, I want a pen blank like that. Can you do that? And pen blanks turned into blocks and knife scales. And um, I was doing strictly material for several years. And some of the wet shaving community actually found me. And um, several turners were purchasing material from me. And um, once the community kind of figured out who this person was that was making the material, they started coming to me and said, hey, when can you make me a handle with that material that you're making? And I was like, no, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not there, I'm not there. And they just kept bugging me. And then finally one day, it was, I can't remember who it was, it was probably DK or Rafa or one of them that, or Paul Lather Me Whiskers, no, 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 you can do it. You can do it. Just make me one. Just make me one. And then that was it. I made nice. one and, and, and it just kind of never stopped from there. Excellent. See, that's why the, we ask these questions. I, I didn't, I, I didn't know the first part of that story. I mean, and I will caveat that. Yes. You know, in hindsight, it was probably expensive, you know, <laughs> you know to, to go through all that to make a pen, but yeah. spending time with the kids, I mean, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard to put a price tag on something like that, right? So, right. That's what it was for. And, and I got some of the best memories. I mean, um, I shared this on a live before, but it, since you're so, I, I got to tell J Mac this since he doesn't know the history. <clears throat> when we're our very first time casting resin, and the the one of the makers um, that makes the translucent dyes uh, called Alumalite. And their old school dropper bottles had the tiniest little pinhole in the top. And it was my first time. I didn't know that you should just take the scissors and just, you know, nip the top off. So here's me and my son in there. And I did all this research and went and bought um, uh, HDPE material and made my own like pen blank mold. And I was like, man, I'm going to make me a brick, out of brick like this and slice it into these and here, let's whip this together and we got this going and that going and we're on top of my um my my little uh, table saw in my garage and okay let's do some of this purple and then we're squeezing it and squeezing it man this is just like 
Rip. <laughs> like, no, 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 I need to freaking die, right? Squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it. Boom. The top oh. comes off. Oh, oh man. And, I mean, this is like royal purple. And it's like all over my table saw. It's all over the garage floor. It was the only oh. one ounce. But man, you'd think like Barney got murdered in the garage. <laughs> just gonna say that, yeah, who, yeah, who, who took Barney to the table side? Grimace. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Um, oh, it, like man. you said, the, creating the memories with 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 my oldest, and it was a blast. Man, yeah, you can't you can't put a price tag yeah. on that, brother. It's uh, that's incredible, man. It's so yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. All right, Gardner, go ahead, bud. Shoot. That's funny. The reason I smile is because that must be like a rite of passage because I did the exact same thing with glue. <laughs> they should tell you to cut the tips off of them. You learn that the hard way. Yeah, it was bad. Do you have a favorite material to make handles out of? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say like favorite. I enjoy resin because I pretty much know like what, how it's going to behave. And I mean, you can probably agree with this. You, once you spend enough time with it and with whatever, you know, products that you use as additives, you, you kind of learn the behaviors of it and you think, oh, okay, I, I have a pretty good idea. This is going to kind of look like this and it's going to, the swirls are going to kind of look like this if I use this method, at the, et cetera. Sorry, that's my work email going off. Um, so, um, resin I, I always enjoy because it's consistent. But um, I really enjoy um, wood also. Only for that long time addiction to it. Nice. Um, so is there like, let's say one thing about, um, about the company that, that we may not know? Um, that you may not know? Mm-hmm. Um... I mean, not anything like super fun. I mean, <laughs> there's probably a lot of stuff that like that people would say, oh, I didn't know that. But um, oh, okay, here's one for you. Um, I I made and still own to this day. Um, I made more than two hundred brushes or 200 handles with a lathe that, with lathe and tools that I probably only invested like $600 on. I mean, wow, nice. You don't, you don't need a, you know, $10,000 lathe to turn something that's only this big. I mean, um, great if you want to go turn a bowl the size of a car tire, but. <laughs> Some people um, will ask for that. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. yeah, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> hey, I'm envious because if I could, my wife would have me in there on some walnut right now turning a dish for the table. But it's like, honey, I'm going to need a bigger lathe. So um, she doesn't want to break bread. So <laughs> I guess she doesn't get the walnut serving bowl then. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as like the process, how um what how long does it take from like inception thought until the finished product oh i mean if if there was a if there was a need um i mean i've i've cranked out a handle in a few hours but and and that's like from pouring to to turned but there's some variables that fall in there like the resins you know 
able to demold in a certain amount of time and isn't technically cured until a certain amount of time. But if it's like hot enough, I mean, thankfully we get some heat here. The cure time, it goes much faster and you could, you know, pump out a handle faster. So typically, you know, I try to cushion a day or two or three. Um, but I try to pour while the idea is fresh mm. and I'll go out and try to pour right away just so I can at least put it in front of me. And it, even if the ratios don't match the way I envisioned it, at least I won't forget, you know, kind of like before you go to bed. Um, right. But uh, that way I'll at least have a, some sort of palette to go back to and, and reference. Nice. 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 I like it. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, this one hopefully should be hopefully a softball. I feel kind of bad for putting you on the spot right off the bat with the herb one. So um, what's your favorite shaving knot? What, what, what's, what's, you, what's your personal go-to like for your personal shaves? You a badger guy or a, or a synthetic? Um, so it, a year ago, I would say badger with without any doubt. Yep. Even today, I'm still like 99% badger. Um, the, the newer knots that have, have been coming out, you know, uh, G5C, MIG, Mula, Mule, however you want to call it. Um, yeah. they, they're, they're very, they deliver. Oh, yeah. um, but I'm still not a synthetic guy. No. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll touch a synthetic once a week. That's it. And I'm and I'm every day. I'm I'm in the I'm in front of the mirror every day. Nice. So, um, one day a week, synthetic gets love. Every other day, it's all badger. Nice. Uh, my favorite, my favorite is a turn and I have a turn and shave L three, and I absolutely adore that knot. Um, can't buy it, that specific one anymore. Um, but I'll keep that one forever because I really, really love it. Um, and I use a lot of my own stuff. So um, proper. it starts primarily with testing because I'm going to beat the snot out of something before I sell it to someone to ensure that it can take a beating. And then it just ends up just staying in my den. So I've nice. probably got a dozen of my own creations with you know v1 v2 v3 high mountain silver tip gel like all of these different options that um that i either used to sell or currently do sell nice yeah it is hard to beat a great badger knot i mean i was i was kind of the same i was more badger than synthetic but like you mentioned those new synthetics i mean they're just they're just great so now for me i kind of went the opposite i'm like mostly synthetic but like the one or two special shaves a week is like oh, i gotta reach for the badger for that special shave but yeah the yeah it's we're, we're so spoiled now in in the hobby like i remember i've been in it since 2014 and i remember synthetics back then compared to now and it's just they were junk weren't they oh, yeah, they, were, they were horrible <laughs> yeah. they were just absolute garbage but now we're, we're just so spoiled now which is which is awesome i mean it's, it's great i am um... And I've been learning how to use some of these newer synthetics. And it's it's really interesting. Like almost if you, um, a lot of folks, their primary concern is like the backbone. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I've learned that with like the, the made in Germany knot, for example. It's like, oh, it's got enough springiness in the fibers that you know, once if you like half splay, you can still get some good scrub with it. And it's like, oh, shit, this thing's badass, you know. <laughs> so uh, it, it, I was really enjoying uh, some of those newer synthetics. And I couldn't agree more compared with the old synthetics. I can't even believe the old synthetics are even being made anymore. They're absolute trash. <laughs> I so. concur. It's like the plus off. I remember when that came out and everybody was losing their minds. Like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Yeah. It's the greatest thing ever. But now, now it's like the, the synthetic knots we have now. Like, I mean, yeah, for, yeah, the 
Plus off won't even touch them. So. Yeah. 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 Hey, go ahead, Gardner. What do you got? So, um, I guess backstory to this question, why I ask it. I've been turning brushes for a little while, and my wife asked me one night, you really like blue, don't you? So I guess, unbeknownst to me, the majority of my products had blue on them. So do you have a favorite color or favorite combination of colors? Um, I kind of go through spurts. Like, for example, um, I, I, I find myself in, like, blue, purple, teal. I, I find myself in that range often. You know, someone will ask me for like orange and I'm thinking, I can't remember the last time I made something with <laughs> orange. Um, but I kind of go through phases. Sometimes I'll be, um, like last year, I kind of went through this phase where I was using a lot of, um, interference colors so it would be you know for example interference green with uh, an opaque and a uh, i said inter interference green right so interference green and then like a green mica with an opaque and i would put the three together and I was doing combinations like that green red gold and, and like I was doing that a lot so I was I'd have to say what was really consistent last year is I was using a lot of opaque I still really like opaques a lot um but last year I, I, I found myself really attached to interference colors um for those that don't know what those are that's think of a pearl but just one color Oh, okay. Nice. So imagine pearl with just green or pearl with just gold. Green's nice. good. Green's good. Green. <laughs> Love green. Yeah, you need both. <laughs> um, so, all right, my question here. Where do you see the, uh, the future of artisan uh, uh, brush making going? Oh, Ooh. Ooh, loaded uh, <clears throat> well, that, that's hard to say. I mean, <clears throat> really, I think that some of the movement that we see from like makers who are, you know, maybe we all we all view it as they close their doors um but maybe they're just moving on you know maybe some of these these uh, folks were turning handles for a decade plus and they're just over it you know maybe they're fixing up cars now or doing something else um that's something i've been trying to keep in my mind that it's not like a doomsday like oh man they got no yeah. business and, you know they had to close their doors hopefully they still have their house you know uh trying to think of it from the aspect of maybe they're just moving on so um i i think that the future i mean i think i speak for a lot of folks that we're definitely seeing some differences in uh, patterns and behaviors of of the consumer um but then again we're not all sitting on our asses working from home and watching netflix all day and shaving um i think for us that especially that we're kind of like me who got started during the covid time you got kind of spoiled right out of the gate and i don't think that was the reality of the business um so where do i see it i I think just like anything else, like those who are still interested in the craft, the hobby, um, and have the ability to continue doing it, they'll hang around. And those that fall out of interest or maybe have other ways that they need, they need to focus their attention, you know, family, financially, et cetera, they'll move on. So. 
kind of yeah, the big I mean, end, but yeah there's um i mean you guys i mean there's you know to what i consider i've heard a lot of us do consider two heavy hitters in the brush game right here with us you know and you know like paul trotter i mean there's so many you know like j max said we are spoiled beyond means right now when it comes to products and what was available to us and yeah we're definitely going to do our part to keep your guys' lights on as much as possible so keep those lathes churning for sure <laughs> that's great uh -huh. and, and 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 i make the point i think every artist in spotlight too I, I bring it up and tonight's gonna be no different so you, you know the white shaving community like like we're we're a niche within a niche and especially here in the instagram side of things the discord side of things there's a really there's a, it, well it's, it, it, it's growing in number like almost like every day but there's like this core group of, of consumers that were all just insatiable and, and i find like the the artisans that that intermesh themselves within this more community-minded part of the hobby because it is you know it's a gigantic hobby on I mean, these facebook groups with the more utilitarian shavers but in the community as i like to call it itself the really tight-knit community the artisans that get involved in that just they all seem to be successful everything is just 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 churning along and it's just it's just it's just a beautiful thing right because we're all like because within this community we're all nuts like it's just like oh new brush take my money new rates take my money soaps yeah i'll take 26 of them so it's <laughs> so it's, it's 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 the artisan that that puts but, but i guess the long way to say it's the artisan that that gets involved in that aspect of the community and just engages with people which which is it i mean and garner probably agree it's probably it's the the cheapest form of advertising you could do just get engaged with with your consumer base and just be that person and that 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 interacts with with the customers and then you know people are all over that right do you think that um i i agree first of all um because ultimately the 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 and i'm going to use both terms the business term and but the consumer is the one who dictates you know your demand but it, it's the hobbyists, the other wet shavers. They're the ones that are going to dictate my demand. So to support what you're saying, yes, you know, if you're not interacting and, you know, participating, whether it be this way, that way, the other, uh, engaging, of course. Um, it, it can be tough, though. I mean, especially when you're a one-man show. And it's yeah. like, you know, when you're, you know, already working – your primary job and then it's you know you yeah. there's a lot of back and behind the scenes steps that most folks don't don't realize um that you know there's time and material and that's all fine i enjoy doing it to you know decompress from my actual career um but i also have to find that balance because my wife will say, you know, there's, there's, there needs to be a, a trade for your time away from us, from your time away from us there. You, you need to, to grease. Um, so <laughs> got to find the balance, but it can be yeah. challenging with like, um, you know, social media, different platforms, forums. And it's like, man, if, I didn't have to do all this i could make this many more handles or so it's yeah it's a push and plus, pull definitely plus you have all of us crazy wet shaved degenerates just ripping at your guys's heels 24 7 doesn't help either yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> true. true. <laughs> i mean I, I, I mean yeah like i mean we got wet shavers showing up at artisans houses for crying out loud it's it's almost it's almost sad really but <laughs> No, let me in. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> we need. We need. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, go ahead, J Mac. On that note, go ahead. Um. Well, shoot. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Gardner. Gardner. <laughs> there you go. We've had a lot of good right. stuff so far. Uh, I got an easy one for you: high-speed steel or carbide. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I. I really like carbide um it's it's easy um 
I, I, I have this set that just kind of really fits my stance and how I hold the tools. And it's just kind of like, you know, it's like your favorite, your favorite brush or razor. It just works. You go and grab it every time. So carbide is my favorite. Nice. So, um, on that, so do you see, like you said, like you had like, um, you know, simple, um, you know, lathe and stuff like that starting out and everything. So how do you think things like, um, you know, like uh, technology advances and, and the tools and stuff that you guys use? And I would almost ask this for the, both you and Gardner, but um, does that aid like your ability to crank out those brushes more than like using, you know, like other types of tools, you know, that, you know, you've probably replaced or anything like that. So like making upgrades, things like that to your shop, does that help more speed things along or does it hinder you at all? Because you're used to what you started with. In a sense, I mean, the process is the process, right? Like you got to create the material, figure out your shape, drill your ferrule hole, make your shape and then work on the finish. And then, you know, once you kind of develop, like uh, Gardner brought up earlier, you know, with sanding, it's like, okay, once you do, once you figure out your um, routine with how you sand, even if it's not necessary, you do the same thing every single time because it's just like second nature. Like, oh, I go from this grit to this grit every time. And it's like, oh, well, I just sharpened my chisel and man, this looks really good. I could probably skip this grit. No, 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 no. I'm going to hit every single grit all the way through. Um, the process is the process. And yes, you know, upgrades could benefit, but um, it depends. Are we talking about a uh, automated machine like Paladin? Like, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if I could put it on there and say, go, and then it cuts mm. it out for me. Um, yeah, I could definitely change things, but, um, I don't, I don't want it to deviate too far from what I'm used to. Um, because as I mentioned, um, more, more I hope this doesn't sound selfish, but more than this being a business to me, it's being able to go and create and something that I can go decompress away from my career, which I need. I desperately need. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So finding as a like us, like with our shaving, as like for me anyway, that's our Zen mode. That's our therapy. You yeah. know, that's that's our self care time. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Funny, you, you, know, you, get, you, get, you, get, you get in front of that mirror for that, you know, 20, 30 minutes, right? And just everything just, just gone, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's, I mean, that's what we all love about it, right? And that's why we spend ridiculous amounts of money at it. And that's why we keep coming back more each and every day. Because it's just that 20, 30 minutes, man. I would say that the decompressed time is really good, but... Think of it in a little bit longer than shaving, like when you go and pick up your guitar at J-Mac. You know, you're not on it for like five, 10 minutes and you're good. You probably find yourself when you really get in the zone and then you look at the clock and you're like, oh shit, you know, hours gone by. Yeah, or, no, it's true. And it's, it's kind of that, not that you can't achieve that from wet shaving, but. Uh, no, but uh, no, I, I agree 100%. Yeah, because that, that's a great point. Because, yeah, so for me, it's that 20 or 30 minutes in front of the mirror, which is that part of the Zen, the deep, the decompression. But for the four hours before that shave, I've been online, hanging with all, you know, all my friends in the community, talking to people online, doing mafia business, or, you know, talking to Angelo, or, you know, the, the reels he sends me and stuff, or talking to Carlos or whoever. And then for the next, like, seven hours after the shave, it's the same thing. It's hanging up people in the Discord or an Instagram watching the lives. Like it's just it's like an all day decompression. I love it. I, I, I love everything about it. Great. You're welcome. Doesn't that sound funny? <laughs> Doing mafia business. <laughs>
Hey, mafia business, and <laughs> dirty work, guys, but I got to get Someone's got to do it. Got to get done. <laughs> he is the Don for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll tell you what, those Thursdays after the Mafia show are kind of rough sometimes contacting the giveaway winners. It's like, oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> I remember the, the Christmas one from a couple of years ago. Poor J-Mac had like oh, 200 man. or something like that. It was like, oh, God. Oh, that was like a, that was like a two, three-day experience, I think, is what it took to, to compile all that. But but we got it done, though. And I, and yeah. I I'm pretty sure we didn't miss anybody. I don't think I missed anybody. I think everybody got the prizes. So, <laughs> <laughs> comment below if you didn't. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, comment below. <laughs> let's check out some of these questions. I know we got a lot piling up here yeah. for you, right? Then, uh, yeah, John probably has thirty questions in there. I know, right? These are all from Sloppy Badger. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> Sicilian Shaver, have you ever considered using carbon fiber for a handle? If yes, he will buy it. So. Ooh. Yes. Um, so maybe. Um, I my first few attempts at turning carbon fiber. Um, the carbon fiber did what it was designed to do, which was withhold a beating. And um, I broke a tool and nearly my hand. So I put that on the back burner, but maybe one day. Wouldn't, just spitballing, wouldn't, wouldn't you almost have to turn your shape and then somehow wrap it in the carbon fiber then, like as a two-part process maybe? That's always, um, that's always a good idea um, with the, the using the actual cloth like how you could buy the carbon fiber or the Kevlar and the loose cloth. Yeah. Um, that would be the way to go, not what I did. I used um, cutoffs and put them in the resin and just essentially made a big block of solid carbon fiber. And it was like, All oh, right. you yeah. got to learn somehow, right? <laughs> it's true. Oh, my gosh. Um. <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> I love uh, it. Who is your favorite wet shaver and why yeah, is it Floppy, floppy Badger? badger. Yeah. Okay. Ryan does his homework. <laughs> Ryan does his homework. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, Howard Pronto asked, Ryan, I know you make knife scales. Can you cut them and install them? No. I could, but I'm not interested. I don't want to deal with pins and and all that stuff yeah. yeah it can get they can get kind of tricky i know a guy if 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 someone needs a recommendation i i know some people but uh, I, i'll make you scales but i won't install sorry oh yeah i've seen some custom scales on some on some um, edc wear and oh my gosh yeah. beautiful work beautiful work yeah. on some spider codes and stuff like that Woo wee! Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, ooh, here's a good one. Art Shaves. Uh, he's got a two part here. Um, I'm gonna say, say this word wrong. And it's have you ever been? Have you ever turned a handle? A handle inebriated. So <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> oh, you butchered that so bad. I got to put the glasses on. Try I have no idea what that word is. There's too many syllables for Friday night. Inebriated. 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 Yeah, you'll know Nintendo. I don't know. Um, <laughs> AKA Brushworks and Tan's collaboration would be awesome. If you two can make it happen. Also from Art Shaves. I've been known to work with, with others. Thank you. Ooh, take my money, please. Ooh. <laughs> money has been taken. Um, oh, here's one. Uh, Newsy96. What inspires your pores? That's a great question. Yeah, we kind of lightly touched on that. 
Um, yeah. Di different things. Uh, op oftentimes, um, I get a lot of good ideas from the people. Um, hey, I want, I envision this. Can you do that? Oh, let's try it. Um, after you, I, I was, I was hitting kind of some blocks for a while, you know, like, like writers talk about like writer's block. Like I was like hitting blocks with resin pores and stuff for a while. Um, and then it was like when I opened up customs, you know, it was like, oh, people bring ideas and it helped me kind of get back in the zone and also um, learn some new things along the way. So uh, others around me always help inspire, whether it be others from the community, family, et cetera. Nice. It's, it, it's a beautiful thing with customs, especially with some some of us wet shavers, including some of those redneck Canadians, may may not be so articulate sometimes. And we have these ideas and try and put them into words. And it doesn't quite work out. So you end up just sending, you know, the artisan just a bunch of words and a message and what your envision is. And then the artisan, like, does it and shows you the picture. Like, dude, like, how, how did you do that out of what I sent you? Like, man, like, you nailed it. Like, it's... It's crazy. It's a, it really is a beautiful thing. Well, and that at that point right there, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Like 100%. That, that it it's like, you know, oh, I I I made a few bucks, you know, while I was out there being artistic and getting in the zone. Like that's cool, I guess. Like okay, <laughs> I made a little bit, but when you hear someone say, "Dude, I can't believe what you did. Yeah, I love it. That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. I agree 100%. Uh, um, BBS.live, and I want to say this is Mel. I'm pretty sure. Is. Um, have you met anyone in the hashtag wet shaving community in person? And if so, who? Who? Mel, come on. You've been to my house. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah mel's been to my house and um who, who else i'm really close to quite a few people um we just need to get together so um i know that you know i i did and i'm just gonna put this out there I did invite Floppy Badger to come here and turn his own brush Ooh. in his driving distance. And I'll, I'll let you guys go ask him if he's taken that opportunity or not. Sloppy, we, we need to talk, brother. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, happen, brother. I got, I got a date at AKA HQ myself. <laughs> so that's yeah. gonna happen. Did this? And you said you said do it. You, yeah, and you said you're in North Georgia, and mm -hmm. he's kind of in Central South Carolina. So yeah, he, you guys can't be that far apart. Yeah, maybe maybe three and a half hours. That's right. Yeah, yeah. John, John, you gotta do better, but I mean, do better. if if Mel can come from Pensacola, Florida, <laughs> you can get beautiful Northwest Florida. <laughs> and that's Pensacola, if you do not know, if you do not know, if you know. No, definitely. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Gardner. What do you got, bud? I know you're bursting at the seams over there. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I got a list about a mile long. Nice. Um, so have you, have you ever made a handle that was almost like selling a child that you just really did not want to let go? <clears throat> There's been several that I've, I've made and said i'm gonna keep this um there's been a few that have gone to customers <laughs> this i should, probably shouldn't say this there's been a few that i've that have gone to customers where i've told them um please if if this does not meet your expectations i want you to be transparent because I, i'm gonna keep this if you don't like it <laughs> um, uh, that, that was kind of like code word for 
please tell me you hate it. But unfortunately, it never works out. They say, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, but yeah, th there's been uh, a, a handful that I have really liked. And um, I, I have kept, um, but I would say like the ones that have been like the really, really didn't want to let it go. I couldn't because they went to customer. <laughs> You're like, uh... no, I'm like, <laughs> there's a scratch. There's a scratch on this yeah. side. Oh, I didn't yeah. tell you that I found bubbles in there, man. I gotta keep it. It's like so. And the funniest thing happened. This one shattered on the lathe, and I was turning it. So sorry, I'll uh, turn you a new handle. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh man. Um. So go back to the questions here. Uh, Kim Gray asked, do you use the resin shavings as a filler? Um, no, although, um, well, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't be so quick to say no. Uh, typically, no. Um, I do plan to do some experimentation with some in the future, though. And I'll leave it at that. Nice, nice, nice. I think I was going to like recycle, reuse, right? Like having stuff, if you have like a solid or something like that, I don't know. So <laughs> a lot of times it's like curiosity. Like, hey, if I dunk this shit in resin, is it going to work? Yeah. Um, I've done all sorts of interesting things. And I have a list that I still want to do uh, different stuff. Someone gave me some um, Indian corn, the little ones that are like the rainbow colors on them. They're like, can you put that in resin? I don't know. We'll have to try it. <laughs> so nice. it's just always, it's always something. That would be kind of cool if it was possible to have like, like a, like a big pile of just, you know, you know, scraps. Mm -hmm. And then take that and put that into a handle, like a big patchwork or something of all scrap. I don't know if that's, I'm just, you know. <laughs> you never know until you try it. Yeah. <laughs> True. You guys' heads are like. <laughs> Most of the time it's about keeping it clean though. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to like, oh, here, let me pick up all these glow shavings off the floor and I'm going to go cast it into a blank. But oh, they won't mind the, the dirt that's all over them or whatever. And then you think, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to blow it off. Boof, there it goes everywhere. I mean, so sometimes it's like not even worth it. You say, yeah, I'll experiment with it later. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So she also said, Ryan, please, yeah. please explain to Gardner the importance of protective eyewear. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna plead the fifth. <laughs> I, I, I safety. It's extremely important, but I mean, let's just say I don't have the best habits myself. <laughs> I love it. We tried, Kim. We tried. We're but. trying. We're trying. My, I, I, I agree with Kim on that. I mean, that's that hits pretty close to home. So. For the love you love all things holy boys, protect your eyes. <laughs> That's great. Um, Black Mountain Shaving. Joe's amazing. Love that guy. Um, two questions here. First one. So I'm aware of Ryan's foul burrow. What other tricks is he working on? Mm. Question. Faux burrow. Um so Tricks? I don't know. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't have anything like super crazy going on, to be honest. I, I, I've been fairly busy, just in general, work, home life, and shop, kind of all collectively. So I haven't been able to do any like R and D kind of top secret cool shit or anything. Uh, it's been just kind of going going through the motion lately. 
uh, this other question, how smooth are Tansy's hands after palm lathering testing knots? Smooth as butter. No, the, the, um, thankfully, I don't um, naturally have fairly good moisture retention in my skin, so I don't scale up. Um, I'm glad because it would suck if I had to like, you know, hit the corn huskers lotion because I'm, you know, dinosaur scaling all everywhere. Um, <laughs> corn huskers, shout out to people who know what that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like liquid Vaseline. <laughs> Some Tres Flores could help too, by the way. Yeah. Shameless plug there. Um, Tres Flores cures cancer, doesn't it? it it cures a lot. You can cook with so it. So Windex, according to the Greek wedding. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Zedman uh, says, Ryan, when are you going to churn some more metal? I just fin finished one. I haven't posted it yet. Um, I turned a really sick copper handle. Ooh. Um, and... It came out really good. I'll I'll post it. I'll post it in the next couple of days. The customer already has it. And he loves it. Um, yeah, it, it came out really good. Very nice. Very nice. Um, at Noon Z ninety six. This is one question we have also. Um, what's your nine to five? I work. I work in the software industry. Cool. Nice. Hope oh, you got those blue lenses, man. It's good for you. Uh, remember, we already talked about um, eye protection, man. <laughs> yeah. Blue filters, man. Yeah. Get them. You know, in front of a computer 40 plus hours a week. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, ever thought about expanding to any other types of things um, like, you know, uh, bowls or anything else? Cahoon 1776 asked that. I think bowls would be fun, but I would like probably turn one for myself and say, I'm good. Um, I like, I like the idea of a small project. Um, a brush works perfect for me. It's, uh, you know, I pretty much know about how much time it's going to take. Oh, I need this much time to go pour a blank. I need about this much time to work on the lathe, this much time to put the coin in and the knot and all that stuff. Um, but the way my mind is right now, I feel like if I go and explore these other things like a, a bowl or a, a tray and then I'm buying a CNC and get a laser and all this, it's like, no, I, 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 I think I'd be stretching myself too then. So, Long story short, probably not. Yeah, because then that happens, then you definitely have to make that bowl for your wife. <laughs> yeah, then I'm turning walnut for the dining room table to put bananas in. Yeah. Um, how often, uh, uh, Paul underscore Walton underscore B, how often do you keep a handle that you originally intended to sell? So I know Gardner kind of asked that earlier, too. Like, if you saw something, like, you know what? I'm just going to keep this one for myself. <laughs> so it, it's funny. So so I, I mentioned earlier that I use a lot of my, my own items. So I don't I hope that doesn't come across as, you know, self-centered or, or anything like that. Um, and I'll explain why. I haven't shared this publicly before, but from time to time we make mistakes. Um, you know, no. maybe there's a, <laughs> yeah, th this guy doesn't, it, but I do, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, you know, time to time we'll make mistakes and um, I never I never sell a handle that, that has, I don't sell seconds. Yeah. So, and and now that I've said that, some people may look back and think, yeah, I've never seen him advertise a second, because I don't. 
So I'll either keep them or give them away. Um, so a lot of the ones that I have are seconds and that's all perception, right? Like I could say, hey, there's, there's a bubble there and there and there. And then you get it and go, I don't see no fucking bubbles in there. I mean, it's, but us and Garner can, can, you know, back me up on this. Once you get used to doing it, you can see it a mile away or you can feel it as you're standing like, oh, there's some, some bubbles in there or something. Um, so to answer the question, sometimes I do keep a piece that I would sell because I just like it. Um, but now, after I've had something for so long, sometimes I look at it and say, I wonder if I should, like, get rid of this. Like, send it to Murphy and McNeil or something, or just give it away, or I don't know, just so someone else can enjoy it. Um, because then, then I kind of feel like a hoarder, like, oh, look at all these cool things. I can't use all of them. Um, so sometimes most of the time i keep all of them but now that my own personal collection is glow growing glowing uh growing now i kind of have started thinking about getting rid of some of them so we'll see maybe we'll see some lightly used non-second handles <laughs> hit the market <laughs> nice um Sweet. all right so there's a good one too wow this is awesome cool. um so. Zen Man shaves a uh, question to both Brian and Gardner. Is there a shape that you both just hate turning? <laughs> like, you know what? They want it, but dang it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Good question. I'm not a huge fan of um, like, a, like the longer um barbershop styles um every now and then i'll get one where it's like they want to maximize the length and then where the finger grip is i mean it's this tiny little you know 17 millimeter uh finger spacing and it's like i don't i don't like getting in with the tool that close like i just have these visions of my tool catching and then it exploding on the chuck or something so i uh, don't really care for really thin handles or or long um because then i worry about um i always second guess it i have large hands so if i have my hands up there and the damn thing feels like it's too long I can only imagine what the customer is going to think. So yeah. when they say, I, well, I want the, the, the brush handle to be like four inches long, I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> you sure about that? So, like something like this, where the, it's the whole length of this block. That block is six inches long. So imagine the handle only from the bottom to the, fer to the ferrule all the way to where that knot is. Oh, my gosh. Would be the, that would just be the handle. So every now and then you get like a weird request like that, and it's unless that person is a is a lady and they have like really long legs and they gotta you know reach to shave to lather. I don't know. <laughs> head shavers. Head I head shavers. I don't I don't shave my head, but I hear that they like a longer handle, larger splay, and they're not kind of thing, so they can do that. You know. I don't know. It makes sense, but I couldn't say from experience. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, have you ever considered, uh, Joe, again, have you ever considered using reclaimed material? So I have to an extent, and we're getting some weather right now. So if you hear some thunder or the power goes out that i gave you the heads up um every now and then i will um but for the most part if there's not a specific need like 
uh, request from the customer to use a specific wood that was like from Pop's old barn or something like that. I usually stay away from it because it's a lot of work. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, Meg asks, do you have a significant other? And if so, do they wet shave? Oh, that's a great question. I have been trying to get my wife to just try wet shaving mm -hmm. for years. One of us. She would not try it, not try it, not try it, not try it. I would ask, and I asked so many times I got tired of asking, and it was weird because one day, had one one handle that had my 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 newest knot that I offer the V3. It had a V3 26 millimeter in there. One handle is all I had. And I go in there and I'm like, man, I'm gonna use that one today. And I go in there and I'm like, what the hell is my shit? Like looking around, <laughs> where did I put it? And I turned around because you know my side of the bathroom's here and. Her sink is behind me back there. And I turn around and she's over there with um, with my V3 brush. And she's got a Master Soaps Creation a Peppermint Mocha Soap. And next to it, uh, they were sitting there and, and I said, are you using my shit? Like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? And she said, oh, this is really good. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, oh. All right. I said, well, I said, you can have it. I said, you can have it. That, that's fine. And then um, kind of went on about it. So then, like a couple days later, I'm, I, I grabbed my titanium Henson out of the, the little, I have a little rack where a couple of them are hanging. So I grabbed the titanium Henson and I was getting ready to, to shave it. And she's behind me getting ready, you know, and she said, what the hell are you doing on my razor? And I was like, like oh, excuse me. So she confiscated my titanium Henson. And she said, that's mine now. And I was like, oh. So anyway, I'm thrilled that she's part of the hobby now. Um, yeah. One of us. She I've been took I've... some soaps off my hands, too, thank goodness. I like was drowning in soap and she took probably about six or eight man i've been trying mine's the same as yours at the start just i've been trying 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 she's no interest and i don't think she's gonna pick it up on her own mm -hmm. but i mean i would gladly give her like half of my den <laughs> you, you can use it all i don't care just you know here's here's a rate like like i i have a yates uh 921 rainbow mm -hmm. pvd so oh yeah you know so, I mean, that's a perfect, like, razor for a female, right? Like, when she saw mm -hmm. it, I wanted it. goes, oh, that's really pretty. I'm like, if you want to learn wet shaving, it's yours. <laughs> and uh, still, still, and I dangle it in front of her face. Everyone's mom, like, do you want to try wet shaving? I mean, you, you complain endlessly about how bad your shaves are with the crap you're buying at the store. Yeah. Just, you like this razor. I teach you how to use it. No, no, I'm okay. It's like, oh, you're killing me here. You're killing me. <laughs> It's crazy. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I've literally given up. I did not think my wife was ever going to try. And then it was so weird that just that one day, it was like, who are you? <laughs> Where's my wife? You know? I, I, I might have to change my tactics. I might have to hide her ugh, cartridge ugh, razor <laughs> that she has in the shower and just put the rainbow PDD just, in there. Do it. Mild blade. Sweet, just, sweet. Yeah. Just, just do it, and she'll be like, "Where's my razor?" I'll be like, "It's in the shower." That's not my razor. It's now. <laughs> That's it. Use it. Take your swim. Furry and furry legs are shaved. Take your pick. Yeah. <laughs> but in yeah, right. in full transparency, I mean, I'm glad that she found something she liked. I mean, heaven forbid they try it and like the razor's too aggressive or yeah. the soap's not performing like they envision it, and or you know you you're or, you know, the husband gave poor instruction on how to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, 
you don't want the the first experience to be a bad one so i'm just glad that it was a good one for my wife that's right that's six less tubs i have to kill <laughs> yeah see there's there's four wet shavers in my house there's me my wife and both our daughters oh great you need oh, some soap i got some we get <laughs> you can always use more probably you just need room for it. but uh but yeah all all wet shavers and um yeah so but but and that's the thing, though. There's some stuff that I have. Where did that? In one of their rooms, in their <laughs> bathroom. Crystal has it in the shower. I'm like, yeah, that's great. It's a good, it's a good problem yeah. to have, though. It was, it was nice getting to sniff that tub of soap. I sure wish we got to shave with it. Yep. A oh. couple of the ones that my wife took, I was really looking forward to. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was really looking forward to a couple of them. So now I, I asked her, do you still like that one? You still, you still like that, that YRP? Yeah, yeah, I still like it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just buy more. I know a guy where you can get it. Um, here's a good one here. Speaking of my beautiful bride, um, if you had to start over from the beginning, what, if anything, would you do differently? Wow. Getting all deep, huh? Oh, she hits uh, everybody with that one. So. Oh, yeah. Woo -wee. <clears throat> um, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Having to start over, and I'll, I'll answer this specific to the, the brush making business. Um, you know, I've, st I'm still really enjoying the, the, the brush making business part of it. And I think a lot of that has to do with, as I mentioned earlier, kind of the small projects. Um, it doesn't have to be this long drawn out process. Um, so I'm still enjoying it. As far as if I kind of tied it all in together from like turning, making materials in, into to brush making, it, it may not have evolved the way that it did if I hadn't taken that path. Um, but maybe I would have pushed myself earlier on to try different materials like you know, even in like the pen turning days, uh, just to explore more with, you know, wine bottle stoppers or uh, other types of like turning kits or even different materials back then. Um, I probably would have done that earlier on. There. Nice. Right on. Right on. Um, did you feel... Uh, <laughs> here's a good one from Kim Gray. Very hard question to ask. Okay. I don't have no money. I'm married. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out to the Shade Meagles as oh, well. It, what is your talk about favorite ice cream Meagles. flavor? I mean, Please do not say <laughs> chocolate chip. <laughs> um, <laughs> so have a favorite brand and a favorite flavor so favorite brand is bluebell and um, just og homemade vanilla that you you can't go wrong with bluebell homemade vanilla mm -hmm. Solid. that's simple but one. effective yeah love it so good i, I can respect that it's so yeah. good nice uh, uh, Ian, of course, this one's for a gardener who's pointing out to him when did the Hulk start wearing orange under armor? <laughs> Shout out to my brother looking swole. <laughs> um, what's the best of Enable Shaver? What's the best feedback you've ever received from a customer? Oh, I like that. Um, <clears throat> You, you know, I would have to say 
it's been the times when someone has said, that's not how I, how I envisioned my project or I don't like it. And because I think that, that there's a, you have the opportunity then to, you know, experience humility and not, it brings you back down to earth, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, it can't be that every single handle that I do is perfect. Like, it's it's got, there's got to be some ones where folks are like, mm, that's not quite what I was saying. And I've had a few people do that to me. I'm extremely thankful for that. Um, Cause I'd hate for them to pay for something and then they just didn't want to speak the truth about um, how they weren't happy with the color or how they envisioned it, etc. I know that's not specific feedback. Um, Lord Shady, who I'm very good friends with Joey, but he, he gave me good constructive feedback once and that I'll never forget. Nice. nice. So that, that, that's probably, a, so probably one of the most important things, right? Like, I mean, if, you know, you're doing brushes, custom upon custom upon custom, and every single person's like, oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. But if they don't, but, but and they're just saying that because they don't want to either offend you or, or let you down in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. it's, it's not doing them any favors because they're getting something they're not 100% happy with. And it's not doing you any favors because. Right. Because just you, you don't have that feedback, right? And and, and then, mm -hmm. you know, and then heaven forbid, they tell you everything is fine, right? And then they get it. And the next thing, you know, you come to find out that you know they've been on social media saying, yeah, you know, I got this brush from, from Tansy or AKA, and you know, we talked a great length about what I wanted. You know, we just didn't quite deliver it. You know what I mean? And that would be even worse. So, mm -hmm. so for sure, but yeah. I, I know I got to miss sometimes, you know? Well, yeah, um, it's bound to happen. Yeah. It is bound to happen. Or you see them selling it in the second market, like 48 hours after they got it. And it's like, wait, bro, you said everything was good. You loved it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. oh, man. Um, well, before it gets too late, I have two giveaways here. Um, wow. I'm okay, so I'm going to go join the comments. Uh, it's great, great seeing you, Ryan. Uh, everybody have a great job. Uh, so I'm just messing. It, Beautiful. It's crazy. That, um, the, the pink one, that was actually made with the version one knot. So for those that love the version one that I no longer have access to. Um, that's oh. going to be a sweet brush. An unobtainium right here. And then this one here. G5C. Ooh. That was for the Lothar Red release. Yeah. Nice. Right and matte finish, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not done yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gardner knows what I'm saying. Yeah. This mat to me, it's not done yet. Sorry. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Um, but it's great for shave of the day photos because you don't get that glare though. That I, will yeah. say. <laughs> that I will say. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna give these two away. So on on that note, um, for this one right here, being that it's you know so rare, handy. Yeah. One to forty-two. Pick a number, and I'm gonna count. I pick the number. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I'll count. Uh, let's do my wife's birthday. Twenty-two. Nice. All right. Well, I'm doing that. Gardener, ask a question. I put them right in the middle too, didn't I? <laughs> That's fine. Make them work. We, we all do. That's right. We all right. do. <laughs> so, what was the most difficult? Speaking of customs, what was the most difficult custom project you took on? Um, uh, so far, I would say, um, 
turning those solid metals. I never, mm -hmm. I never knew what I was getting into. And it's, they're, they're, they're beasts. It, it's, but, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I learned so much, um, so, so much. Um, but mo most challenging for sure uh, is the, the, the solid metals. It's, it's not easy by any means. People who are not using, uh, uh, you know, automated machinery to turn metal, brass, copper. I mean, that's, that's some tricky shit. So. What about you? Or oh, are you good? So this one here, right edge, which is going to be Jesus of Vegans himself, Seth. Wow. Ooh, the conquistador yeah. cucumbers. Congrats, Seth. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Seth that. got the of him. And I bet you he's thrilled about that color, too. Yes. I know he is. Congratulations, Seth. Congrats, this is going to come to you, bud. You're oh, welcome, Seth. Oh, my God. That is so awesome. This is, that's... That's a good man right there. You got, you got to know Seth. That's good people right there. I'm very happy. Yeah. Okay. He's got that. He's definitely, he's getting the pink. So for the red, oh man, this is a hard one. Gar between Gardner, J Mac, you guys, I don't know. Who wants to pick the number between either Go for one it, of J -Mac. you? J Mac, you do it. All right, I'll do it. Um, One to 44. You know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that the heck with it, man. Um, I know you're thinking I'm gonna pick your number, but you know what? I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reward the OG tonight. Number one, numero uno. <laughs> Whoever popped in. Wow. So that. This is why you jump on first things first. Sicilian shaver. Hey. Oh. There you go. He had some great questions tonight too. Congratulations, brother. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not, sure who has, <laughs> I'm not sure he has a G5C. So, yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Congratulations. So, um, I'm going to need your the shipping address, info, and also uh, email address for tracking. Send it to me, Angelo.Amador Jr. on Instagram. We'll get your stuff sent out as quick as possible. So, congratulations, guys. Heck yeah. Thank you, Jason and uh, Angelo. Yeah, right on. I have one of these on my desk at home. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this, I have to swear, I, I don't know, I have to add, this is my own personal question. I, I got smaller I, I, ones now. I grew up in the 80s, and if you know the 80s, Teal was like the uh -huh. company uh, in the 80s. So was that an inspiration or anything like that for your colors for this? Oh, you're going to laugh. It, I, I saw um, Mem mentioned it in the comments earlier about the logo. Um, if you want the quick story, I will. Um, even though I'm in the tech industry, I'm not a graphic designer. Um, so I very much needed help with my logo. Um, my good friend, Paul, helped me with my logo design. And actually, my sticker guy designed that logo. And the teal and reddish orange that you see is actually one of my hybrid blocks that I made. So if, if you cruise my Instagram feed and look for colors, you'll find that block. And it's actually a snippet of one of my hybrid blocks. Oh, that is cool. Nice. So, I dig it. Thank you. That is cool. Yeah, I, I just love that color scheme. But like I said, if you if you grew up in the eighties, you know you saw teal mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was like that, the electric purple. You know that whole synth wave vibe. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I get. Miami Vice, baby. Yes. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Let me. Uh, 
me catch up real quick, see if I missed any questions. Sure. And then that's a two beautiful hosts here, if they have anything else. Um, favorite burger joint, and what are you ordering for the Enable Shaver? Like mainstream burgers? I mean... <clears throat> um, or mom and pop, just close to you. Yeah, where, where's, we, what's we, your jam? If you want a burger and you wanted to hit home, where are you going? What you going to get? We got a really good place here in Freehome, Georgia. It's called uh, the BB Tavern, and they've got some killer burgers and that that's my my number one spot right now um they've got they've got some really good stuff if if i was gonna do like on the road looking for a chain um i don't know maybe five guys charge this is calling oh Big brother bots. is no joke. The no. bots are coming. Yeah, the bots they're, 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 they're going to start getting ads for all different burger joints now. Watch. Everybody yeah. watches. Start getting ads for burger places. Sonic, I'll Culver's. I'll, I'll, I'll be scrolling Facebook where it'll like, be an ad for five guys. I'm like, I live in Canada. There ain't no five guys here. What the heck? Or the Mine's in and Taco in Bell. Georgia. Anyway, so it's all Taco Bell ads of mine. Yeah, so. oh, oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I know the CEO. <laughs> um, so there's a collaboration going on, and there is something very special happening right now with some great gentlemen by the name of the Shave Migos. Mm -hmm. um, and they were on earlier today and alive, and that was definitely something to witness. So, uh, Tans, you had a very big hand in this. So, if you want to speak on that for a second, and we kind of raise a little bit of awareness about that for those guys and for the cause. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the, the Migos. Um, you know, Nikki, Soli, and, and Carlos um, approached me about the, the, the brush for their soap release. They were working with Johnny and, and Jason. And um, I was, you know, happy, you know, for the challenge that they presented me with. And um, I actually ordered a, a backup coin um, for for their, their brushes in case I damaged one or something like that. And I let them know like, hey, if anyone asks, you know, uh, I can I can make another one or whatnot. And they were like, oh no, you know, you can go ahead and, and just, you know, make one and, and sell it. And I was like, nah, let's do something else. We got to talking and jamming and, and we all came up with the idea. Let's do some fundraising. So uh, we spent about a week um, you know, researching, you know, what, what we were comfortable in uh, deciding on. And we went with uh, Stand for the Troops. It's a organization, uh, I believe it's headquartered in Florida. Um, they primarily deal with uh, services um, for uh, troops that have uh, combat tro troops that have, uh, you know, Experienced PTSD from returning after returning home, also uh, brain damage from combat. Um, they have networks of of doctors and uh, other medical services, you know, for the actual um, veteran, and not only the veteran, but uh, counseling services for the family. So uh, we, we we decided that that was a a, a good uh, fit that we were comfortable with and it kind of tied in real good with you know uh men's uh, mental awareness month and we went for it so um nick was kind enough to set up the uh fundraiser and i said well i'm i'm happy to to add a brush let's let's do it and um it's, it's been getting some good chatter appreciate everyone that's um hopped in and able to toss a few bucks at it yeah, yeah, it's a tremendous cause, and you know what they're doing. And for those three guys, you know the Shape Migos, um, uh, Sully, Nikki, and and Carlos, got an honored to meet them. You know at the the meetup here, which was amazing to meet them all in person. 
but uh, yeah, I mean, just like yourself, I mean, they're true to life, amazing people, and this is a, a great cause. So if anybody, if you haven't got on there yet, go to there, donate, put some money in there, and the raffle's happening on Monday. So very excited about that for sure. So I cannot wait. Um, and I do believe on that episode of Shape Eagles, my beautiful bride, Crystal, will be on too to help. With. She's the guest, and she's going to be helping along with that as well. Shameless plug here. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I may real quick, um, and you'll have to forgive me, um, there's been a handful of, of other folks who have been kind of, you know, putting things in, in, in as far as um, helping hit other milestones. I mean, when, when Nikki first posted this fundraiser, I, I think you had it set at like $500. And, you know, just like typical GoFundMe fashion, it's like, okay, well, then you can set for another threshold. And then, you know, uh, I believe Caleb was the one who came along first and was like, okay, well, if y'all get to this number, I'm going to add this uh, uh, Aylesworth, you know, prototype razor. And, and then you just more people started adding things in there to make it more um, some of them are even for fun, right? Like Ken can shave his beard. Yeah. Like who wants to see Ken shave his beard, right? That's going to be good. Um, solely shaving his head. That's going to be good. He was kind of nervous about it too. <laughs> he was like, oh man, you guys, if you guys hit that number, I'm going to have to shave my head. And his hair is not like mine. Like, if y'all notice, like, have you seen underneath his cap? Like, he's got some. Oh, yeah, he's some got hair. some hair. Yeah. yeah. I met him in person. He's got some beautiful locks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not for much longer. Uh, um, just but, a reminder for anybody that donates between now and, um, uh, yeah, I want to say if he, for every $12, you got to do it individual, um, individual purchases or individual donations. Mm -hmm. $12 is going to get you a $20 gift card to TRC, to the Razor Company. So when you do your $12 each time, you can do multiple times, please. Um, screenshot it, send it to Nikki Shaves so he can forward it to Jason so Jason can get you that. So for every 12, you're going to get 20 to spend right here at the Razor Company. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. big. That's big. And, and that. We all greatly appreciate that, Jason. Yeah. He's got a huge volume. Yeah. Well, it's like, and, and, and to your point, I, I know what you're angling at, uh, Ryan. Yeah, the community is just, this community is just bonkers. It, it really is. You know, for fundraisers and stuff like that, people just, they just come out and they just give and they give and give and donate prizes and stuff. And it's just, yeah, that's why we, I mean, that's not why we're, we're not in it for the free stuff. We're not in it for the, we're, we're in it for the camaraderie and just the caliber of people that we have in this community. And it really is a beautiful place. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. See this. And, and, and here's the thing. I mean, if, if someone has to not has to, that's the wrong word, but if someone chooses to, you know, throw some extra things in the pot just to make it, interesting hey i'm okay with that like whatever's going to get us to our goal you know what i mean yeah. um so it, it it really speaks volumes so I, I appreciate everyone and even even all of the other folks i mean you know we've all seen little you know posts on social media you know it's not always money that drives everything it's talking about it sharing it with others yeah reposting it like that that all counts that's all part of participating in it so thank you everyone that's right um people are asking um jason when is the cutoff for the match for the gift card donations tonight okay so for the next 22 minutes until 9 30 eastern is the match so between now and 9 30 um, for those who donate twelve dollars to the um, Shave Eagles Tansy to this uh, to the brush um, GoFundMe, 
he's going to match the the twenty dollar gift card. So you have until nine thirty Eastern, so another twenty one minutes to do that. And then when you do it, every twelve dollars that you do, individual uh, donations, screenshot them, send them to Nikki Shaves. He's going to be keeping track for the rest of the night until um, until nine thirty. So if you haven't done it, do it now. Shave Migos, all the guys in their bios. I have it in my bio as well. The link to go donate. So, yeah, great. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah. On that note, when people get let's get them going, get them out there so they can go donate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. I can't believe like what what everyone has done. I mean, it's it's so so cool. Yeah, freaking awesome. Yeah, one hundred percent. Definitely love it. Love it. Absolutely love this community. Love all you guys, everybody watching. Heck yeah. Um, before we go, my awesome uh, hosts here. J-Mac, you got anything else, brother? Uh, uh, just thanks, Ryan, man. Great to great to hang with you tonight and talk to you and get to know you a little bit better. Man, uh, I, I love doing these. Love getting – just like getting more in-depth with the artisans and, and the people in our community, man. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it, was, it's, it was a blast. Thanks so much. Appreciate it and feelings mutual. I don't always get to, you know, at times we're all able to be cordial with each other in the middle of a 70 person live, but it's usually a bunch of, you know, cheers mugs and middle fingers and this is and that's, and, you know what I mean? It's true. Uh, always fun. <laughs> I, I, I am known to get that way once in the blue moon. <laughs> so. But yeah, at a more personal level, uh, uh, feelings mutual. Thank you. You're welcome. Right brother gardner my brother you got anything that was a pleasure getting to know you better it's nice to talk and chat with somebody fellow brush maker so it was, a, it was a fun life thank you likewise nice we'll be looking for that collab soon um <laughs> it's gotta it's great. happen it won't be in copper <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> they're like nope don't even <laughs> well uh yeah so let's wrap this up so people can get going and on behalf of jason everybody here at the razor company and behalf of all of us thank you for taking time for tonight um we do this every friday 7 30 and we're booked up as far as i know until like i don't even know when next year 2025 i have no idea 2036 is last i heard greatly appreciate it appreciate everybody Gardner, J Mac, love you guys. Thank you. And Brian, thank you so much. Keep rocking and rolling, man. And we'll keep throwing money at you guys. It's no problem. So it was a pleasure. Appreciate the invite and the, the opportunity. All right. So, all right, guys. Talk to you later and have a good night. Thank you. Thank See you, everyone.